Today on the Slap Stocks FC podcast, I brought on sports card Tom from the UK. Tom gave excellent advice and excellent analysis on what the situation of soccer cards is overseas in the UK and around the world and how it's going to actually change the way that soccer cards are bought and sold for the foreseeable future. Tops is doing a great job. Panini, not so much. Let's dig into it. Welcome back, everyone, to the Slab Stocks FC show. My name is Aaron, your host, and today I am joined by Sports Card Tom. Tom, thanks so much for joining me. I've been waiting for a long time to have you on the show, and finally, today is the day. Uh, thanks for joining me. I'm really pumped. No, thank you for having me. I mean, it's been for you guys. It's been a, an interesting journey from when when does Slab Stocks FC start? All, August, August thirteenth. Yeah. Um, and then obviously seeing your personal journey, selling a lot of your collection to get that off the ground, it was phenomenal. And obviously how far you guys have come and 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 slab talk, in slab stocks in general, like it's it's crazy. So I'm, I'm uh, very humbled to to be a part of this, and I'm glad you've you've got me on. So I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. And also, you know, anyone out there like Tom, you know, Tom just reached out to me one day and started talking to me about cards and and soccer cards and whatnot. And uh, here we are today hosting hosting a show. So that's how it normally happens when people get on these shows. They just reach out and start talking to me. I like talking to nice people. So if you're one of them out there <laughs> that wants to get on the show, I just feel free to shoot me a DM at Slab Stocks Aaron, and I'm sure we can work something out. But let's get into Tom's journey because Tom is is from the UK, of course, and. Tom's got some unique perspective here to, to share with us about tops and panini and soccer card difficulties, you know, stuff that really provides, be, you know, a benefit being in the UK. Uh, you know, how did you get into cards in the first place? And then we'll jump into these other topics as we go. Yeah. So my journey is quite sort of unique, I would say. I mean, I, I was in, it's, I've nearly been in the hobby for a year now. It's 9th of December when, 9th of January, sorry, when I first bought my first card. Um, I think the day before that, the 8th, I saw Gary V actually post, you know, Sasha, Sasha Tamadon? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. He posted a picture of him with his Mbappe cards in his hand. Um, yeah. Me, I obviously being a football fan, I, I, I loved Mbappe since he was at Monaco. Um, being a FIFA fan, this is the main reason. So playing FIFA was the main reason I got into sports cards. Um, seeing M them Mbappe cards, I was like, I need I need one of them at least. I just need one. Like That's su like super dope. It's like artistic. It looked like artwork to me. Um, so then I started thinking about why am I blowing so much money on FIFA Ultimate Team and, you know, every year it refreshes, so you're, you're effectively losing the team you've invested yeah. in for a year. And I was like, it just seems stupid to be willing to put money into something which I'm going to lose in 12 months' time. Um, well, even less than that, because when the season ends, it's kind of a dead game anyway. Um, mm. But not to be sort of looking for, for something which could potentially increase in value. So the second I saw that through through Gary V's Instagram story, I hit Sasha up. I was like, "Yo, like, where do you get these cards? Like, how are you doing this? How do you grade them? everything?" I asked him the whole nine. Um, same with Adam here as for sale. He was very helpful at the start. Um, shout out Adam, love the guy. Um, yeah, he, he helped me out a ton. Like, he's one of the most knowledgeable people I feel like in the hobby. Um, he knows it all. So I was just sort of going back and forth with these people, sort of just asking questions. If I didn't know something, I just wouldn't hesitate to ask. I think that's the easiest way to learn, um, as well as sort of making a few mistakes myself, buying match attacks, which was sort of a bad thing at the start, um, yeah. and then realizing quickly how there was no demand for that. Um, I basically just dive straight in. I, you know, I had money to, to sort of spare, um, and I was like, I want to get, I want to get into this. And the second you get in, you're sort of hooked. If you if you love football the way some people do, the way I do. Um, and these cards sort of add value to you when you're watching these games as well. So um, I asked a lot of questions. I was in Discord servers. I was just doing all, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so it, it was it was crazy, but I'm so glad that I saw that Gary V post because if I would have just skipped over Instagram that day, I wouldn't have seen it. Yeah, and to think about it, like you watching a football match or a soccer match, how much more do you enjoy it? And like, you're like, I got a card of this guy. Like I'm invested. I want to sit down, watch yeah. him, cheer him on. Like you really feel like you're a part of it, right? Like exactly. that's how I felt a long time when I was starting cards. Like, it's like, this is really dope. It gives me another connection to the game that you wouldn't have otherwise. And sitting here now, it's like, holy cow, how did I just play Madden or just play 2K in the past? You know, like way long ago for myself, you know, short term for you. But that's crazy. I'm glad you made that jump, and that's really awesome. You know, sometimes isn't it just wild how like one event triggers a complete yeah, exactly. Waterfall? That was it. And I mean, if you went back and look at my my eBay history and saw like some of the the steals I was getting in January, it was ridiculous. I mean, 
I picked up like a Marcus Rashford Tops Chrome Refractor for twelve pound. It was like probably would have cost more to grade than it cost me to buy. Yeah. Um, I put the the Tops Chrome Mbappe twenty seventeen eighteen. I was picking them up for like one hundred and forty dollars. Like I was getting steals, like PSA tens and, and BGS tens, and um, it's just yeah, like you say, if if I would have never seen that Instagram story, never messaged Sasha, or Sasha never replied, like I wouldn't be probably on this podcast right now because I would have lost yeah. interest straight away. Um, but it was something which was always sort of interesting because my auntie, she was in America at one point. She was like, sent, she'd get me basketball cards. Um, so it's always something which, you know, I always sort of had sort of an insight to. Uh, I just never sort of took it seriously. Like uh, over here, the, the sort of card industry isn't as big as it is in the US. Um, the, the thing, the main thing over here is stickers. They're like the, the easy access things, match attacks and then stickers. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wonder whether if obviously it was bigger, there was a bigger distribution in the UK, whether that would have sort of triggered it at like sort of an earlier age. That would have been interesting to see. Yeah, and that's what triggered it for me, you know, walking to my target and buying, you know, a ton of 2011 tops update packs back when yeah. Mike Trout was a rookie. And at that time, I wasn't even on it because of Mike Trout. Not many people were. It's just, it yeah. was something that I could get connected to and, you know, carry that into the future. Like exactly why I'm here today, it's because I was able to rip packs at Target in 2012 Prison Basketball. Um, with that, you know, for you, are you starting to see any shifts in supply from the actual distributors and manufacturers themselves? Are they trying to do more to get into people in the UK's hands and maybe, you know, the EU as well as the UK? Or are they just, you know, kind of, you know, w- walk in the park type of thing to not really do much to help people out? Yeah. So this is so this has been sort of a big discussion um, at the moment. It's picking up. It's getting better. Um, but. I only think there's one party which uh, sort of accountable for that. The only reason it's sort of becoming more accessible for us to pick up products and sort of have access to these products is because Tops is putting the work in. Um, Tops are the only the only sort of uh, card company manufacturer who are actually making products which are accessible to people in Europe, the UK, the US as well, uh, to all three like big regions. Obviously, I'm, I'm sure they probably ship to Asia as well um, and, and the APAC region. Um, but that tops is sort of doing all the work right now. Obviously, we've seen recently a huge jump in tops now demand, um, with obviously Makoku doing 43,000 print run. Um, but that just show, obviously shows us demand there. Um, it was interesting yesterday how tops actually released the tops chrome product in various drops as well. Um, because we've never really seen that whenever, whenever a product drops, it always drops just in the US, especially if it's a Panini product. Um, only yeah. pre releases in the US on through Panini's website. Um, so the fact that Tops sort of have, have taken a step and a leap to sort of say, look, we're, we're back in this in the UK, we're back in it in Europe, we want to sort of make this accessible to to everybody, um, is, is tremendous because it's just going to be able to be in UK collectors' hands. It's going to grow the hobby over here because at the, at the moment in the US, it's the biggest, it's bigger, it's the biggest hobby in the world in the US in terms of the amount of people that are involved. Um, but also, it, there's such a strong passion for football in the UK and, and Europe, obviously with the Champions League, that drives a lot of sort of focus to football. Um, so it's super interesting to me how these are sort of, tops are just sort of getting into the space and Panini are just like not really not really pushing anything right now. Whether that changes, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, and the release was for the new 2019-2020 Tops Chrome Champions League Soccer. And did that that dropped in like tops.uk or, or whatever for like $100 or whatever yeah. that is in pounds, right? So that's a super steal if you think about it because, you know, secondhand marketplace is like $600 US right now, $600, $700 US. And they're dropping it for $100 over in the UK. Um, I know that obviously the product that was getting into the people's hands in the US, Tops didn't sell it for $500. They were selling it cheap as well. But it's still good to see because if you're if you're thinking about Panini, Panini was selling directly through their site select Euro boxes for six hundred dollars to Americans, and that was stupid. I mean, that was stupid with a capital S, and everyone knows it. And the checklist was super weak, and I really that was a flop, man. I love select cards, and that was a flop. But yeah, and I mean, I I, I do a lot of sort of breaks with with US soccer breaks, and and he he's ha- he's having to sell. Barcelona in a four box break. Bear in mind, in a case, it's only twelve boxes. So, for a four box break, Barcelona for a spot's like nine hundred dollars. It's like eight hundred and fifty dollars. I think he's selling it at. So it's it's crazy. Like if you can get it at retail, great. Um, but obviously, I feel like Tops Panini as well. They need to work out the bot situation because the the, the how quick it sold yesterday was absolutely ridiculous. 
Yeah, uh, so that's the other thing. I mean, they put it up for sale, but is it even getting into the people's hands you want it to? I, you know, there might be some people who are snagging from the U.S. still even on that because yeah. it's not like the U.S. people can't access that site. It's just predominantly a U.K. site. Um, interesting, interesting. What What are your thoughts on that champion top scrum Champions League set that released? Um, I know that it was a long time coming. I think initial details for release were in like February of 2019, and then it got pushed back to June. Finally came out in December. Now we have 2020 on the horizon in 2021, February. Yeah. So what's your thoughts on this release that just came out now and how that compares to the new one that's coming out? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I was surprised Fatty was in this one. I thought he would have just been, they would have saved him for next year's uh, to push that. But obviously he did, he did partake in the Champions League last year. So uh, it makes sense. Um, there's a lot of players which have been left out. Like I think a lot of people are upset Phil Foden's not in it. Um it's it's it is super interesting. Obviously, Rayner, I think he's going to be in next year's anyway. But um, it's the product to me doesn't look great. I don't like the look of the product. Yeah. It looks super like when you look when you compare it to 2018, like 2017, 18, and 2018-19, um, and the style and the design and the parallels and, and everything, it, it just looks rushed. It just looks very basic. You can't really tell what a parallel is until you turn it over or you see the purple or the red on the top left. Um, mm -hmm. So it's super interesting that they released a product like that. And obviously, I know they try and keep it throughout baseball as well, the same style. So Yeah, it's not just the design, but it's actually they altered the refractors, how they look versus baseball. Yeah. In baseball, I'm pretty sure that it covered the entire side of the border in soccer. It just did like the top half of the top left corner. Yeah. Um, but then the other thing is I've been starting to see like these like carbon fiber, yeah, carbon which are fiber refractors. So they're just short prints, but they're not numbered. It's, it's it, super. It's, so um, they... Because because they that has the normal finish where it covers the entire card like yeah. in 2018 19 it covers the entire card the color it does that for the carbon fiber ones too but it's not the real numbered refractor yeah. it seems like that they try to do too much with this release versus just sticking to the normal uh, Champions League guns and running with it which has worked really well obviously I mean uh, Felix cards and Mbappe cards are huge from Topps Chrome like massive. And that 2017 Topps Chrome set has some of the nicest colored refractors I've ever seen. I yeah. owned the blue Mbappe 10 for yeah. a bit, and that was a insane card. Yeah, it's super insane. I mean, just just another talking point on um, on Topps, obviously. Um, Dan Lydon is the e-commerce manager at Topps Europe. Um, he replied to at London Cards yesterday on Twitter. Um, he said, hi, fellas, a bit of insight here for the UK. Um, we ordered this one in October 19, so the product was ordered and done in October 19. Um, at the time, uh, the quantity we had for the release seemed like a gamble. 14 months later, and the landscape of soccer is very different. I promise a lot more from uh, a lot more for 2021 um, releases. Keep faith. So he basically saying all he's going to do is going to ask developers to confirm bot activity, um, and he so he thought it was fixed, but obviously it's a jigsaw, so they're still working on that. Um, He's going to get the lowdown for the U.S. on Montgomery. Uh, no promises. I know. Uh, I know a lot of people can help, can get in, and what causes it. And basically, the, the main feature was yesterday. The uh, the refresh rate for the site was like he said it was colossal. Um, it was that's what was slowing the website, which was sort of which delayed us getting the product, which was a bit irritating. But at least they're sort of coming out and like you know vocally saying that we're going to try and make strides to sort of improve this. For, for the future releases which is it's promising yeah it's it's huge and I, that's why i think that you know for us looking at soccer from you know a market perspective it makes so much sense to think that the soccer market is like lagging behind the other developed markets in the u.s the basketball and baseball market is super developed releases are obviously very structured right now but soccer it's it's so underdeveloped and it just it, it obviously caught so much fire so fast for a really under underdeveloped market. That's how prices go up so fast. And then it's yeah. hard to sustain that. But I, I feel like, and I don't know what your thoughts is, I really feel like that we've hit a floor now that's created to where everyone that gets in from here on out, the market's going to just you know shift itself up long term to where every single person that gets added that enjoys soccer and watches soccer and buys and sells based off of soccer games like yourself is just super integral to the market. Like you and a couple other people I've had on this show, I feel like are so important to the soccer card market because you are the type of people that are going to make up what this market is long-term and why it will succeed and why people keep getting in and why tops will value 
the UK as a really big market. And I, I hate that Panini isn't. I hate that they're not looking into ways to get product overseas. I wish that they'd stop pumping up the product production in the US and pledge some of that product to overseas yeah. or to you know the UK and EU and try to get people product in their hands. Because that's how you really grow this thing long term. And that's how you keep the growth going. Yeah, I mean, exactly. You said it just yourself. It's it's sort of, they have to create something, Panini and Tops, where, okay, they're, they're competitors, they're rivals, that's fine. They can both coexist. Um, there's a world where they can, they can coexist. I mean, look what the Panini do with basketball in the, in the US. They release so many products a year. Why can we not just why can we not just get a, a slice of that from Panini? Um, and, and obviously, the more people that get into this, there's going to create more demand, which is going to create these prices to be resold even higher. And eventually, it'll be a millionaire's game, um, which is, I, I don't think, I think that's kind of damaging because most people who are sort of invested in this, um, you've got two people, like I said on one of your posts the other day, it's, you've either got a true collector who's collecting cards because they love a specific player or a specific team, or you've got flippers and, and resellers and people who are just doing it for the hype of it to make a bit of money, which is both okay, but it's got to get to a point where it's sort of feasible for both and it's not, you're not sort of taken away from the true collectors and the people who truly love football just because it's a, an investment you know if you if if you don't know anything about crypto there's a very good chance you're not going to invest in crypto um but with exactly. sports cards it's because it's physical you don't need to know anything about football you can just read a tweet which someone said about someone's going off buy a card and just just wait until he goes to the world cup um yeah. i mean i was looking at i bought some like josh Sargent optics last early this year but like 30 of them and i looked at the price that they just before i came on here and they're like they're going for like twenty dollars each now it's like i bought them for a dollar each it was crazy yeah um, but yeah they definitely do need to work something out panini um and tops you need to create more product and just distribute it better right i agree with that and then i want to bring up something that you brought up early in the episode about fifa because i've been having this discussion a lot through discord and through yeah. instagram and whatnot and if you're watching this go join our slab Sox discord link will be in the bio we just started that up uh, yeah great discussion. i'm glad I know tom's in it hey the soccer is one of the biggest channels in the entire thing right now it's popping off. off it's going crazy i love it uh but about fifa i I've talked about this in the past on Slabstacks FC that FIFA can be a huge additive to the soccer card market because, as you said, people are blowing money and getting no return in the future. There's playing the game, which is is great. I'm not saying FIFA is bad. FIFA is awesome. Yeah. But there's such a more viable way to spend your money and actually enjoy yeah. cards and soccer at the same time. I just struggle with how does that happen? How do you get those people who are really into FIFA – also in the cards, and I don't know if you have any ideas or if you see a path forward for that, because I know that you came over. How can others come over too? Yeah, so I think the biggest thing is content, content creators, um, people who create content. So, I mean, the biggest one recently, you've obviously seen Castro. Um, he's been breaking live on Twitch. Like, he normally just plays FIFA, uh, but now he's going to his card shop in the morning, getting, like, Obsidian boxes, the Chronicles boxes, Top Chrome boxes at the moment impeccable like he's ripping it all on stream and there's like thirty thousand people just sat in his chat um so that's a that's a huge influx of people who are sort of looking at this and be like that's cool like i'm, I'm glad people are sort of getting to see people rip these cards um and i do think i do think that's sort of going to have to be you know because at the moment that's just one big flood of people coming in so but people don't really they're not they're not educated enough to sort of understand what's going to go into this hobby so people like myself card hour the football stop all these people on instagram who are like um posting content and sort of analysis and and statistics of cards prices and how they're going up and down and educating people on on sort of players i think that's very very crucial and very important um and if i encourage anybody if you know anything about football if you're passionate about spurs for instance or arsenal like create content around that team because i don't know anything about up and comers from arsenal but if there's an opportunity there or I like a specific player or he transfers to Manchester United in three, four years down the line, like I'd love to know that that information about that player. Um, so I feel like content's the biggest thing. Podcasts, uh, posting on Instagram, um, blogs, anything that we can do um, to educate everyone. At the end of the day, this is this can turn into such an egotistical hobby for a lot of people. Um, that people want to flex. People want to show off what cards they've got. They want to see how many followers they've got. I've got more followers than you and stuff, but it's this this needs to be very humble we can help each other and everybody can succeed in this hobby um and i think that's the biggest key is we, we need to sort of be a community and not sort of um look to tear people down for something or sort of um engage in negativity i feel like that's the biggest thing right now is um sharing information and making it free to everybody instead of charging money for it so that's my that's my personal opinion my view on it 
That's awesome. Tom, that was the best words you could have said towards the end of the show here. <laughs> normally, normally I, I prompt at the end, hey, what, what's one thing you have to say to new soccer people? But that was great, man. That was awesome. Um, you know, you hit it so perfectly. Content creators is, is how it goes forward. And I'm not talking about content creators that are pumping up certain cards for, you know, their own personal gain and whatever it might be. There's so much out there, so much white noise out there these days. Talking about people like you brought up, like Sunday League Investors, Card Hour, Football yeah. Stop, yourself. Um, there's there's a lot out there right now that are doing a good job. And those are going to be the ambassadors of the market and the soccer card market. And, you yeah. know, obviously, yeah. like, w- w- I I myself got into soccer a, long, a while ago, over a, you know, a year and a half ago. But us as a company, Slapstocks, got into producing soccer card information, <laughs> having people like yourself on it. So that I can have you guys share your voice and help others learn and help make soccer cards accessible to others because our mission here is to make sports cards accessible to everyone. And we can't close off those groups if we don't know anything about it. Like, you know, yeah. I know I knew about soccer cards. I knew about the, the best brands, but I'm a card guy. You know, I'm not a soccer guy, but I was able to relate it to soccer. But you guys are the ones that are going to carry it forward. You and Card Hour and SLI and all those people. So, you know, and MP Sports Cards, I appreciate all you guys for doing what you guys do because it's huge for the market and something that I just don't have the time or the knowledge to even put into it at the moment. And and I hinge myself on getting you guys on the show to help me uh, deliver that to people. So thanks so much, Tom. It's awesome to have you here. Uh, any last words you want for people? And I will give you that that moment here to, you know, pump up your own page or tell people or help people out with some advice. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just one of them. It's like I say, it's be, be humble, ask questions. Don't be a scared. Don't be afraid to ask. I mean, you don't know what opportunities can lead to. I'm a perfect example. I mean, I, I now I'm working on the 137 in proper football um, and stuff like that. And that just come out of just me being passionate about sports cars and people look like loving that side of things. Um, I just think this, this is a, a good opportunity to say like, let's, let's just build a community together. You know, this, this can be bigger, bigger than ever next year. Like we look back at this, this podcast in 12 years at, in 12 months <laughs> and it could be it could be it could be 10x what it is now um but yeah i mean you guys are doing a great job i love these podcasts the one with anthony last last week from australia that was a great one um thank you but yeah there's a, there's a few people a few good people you could get on there's there's for football stop getting on for vintage card hour he's great he's in europe as well he's it, it's there's just great people to follow there's there's, a, there's this community we have built already is, is great um and i'd love to see that sort of continue and, and, and get better and better as we go Awesome. Well, that's it. Thank you so much, Tom, for joining. This was the Slap Sucks FC show, and I will see you all next week.